Okay, let's take a look at 250.56, the earth contact resistance. When the resistance of a single ground rod exceeds 25 ohms, it must be augmented with an additional electrode located not less than six feet away. So there's your illustration right there. Mike, I want to make a comment here. As far as inspectors are concerned, the code says minimum six feet apart. Put them seven feet apart. Put them eight feet apart. Don't put them six feet apart exact, and then when you bend <laughs> oh, it over two or three inches, the inspector's got something to nail Some you guys for. are just that close. They're playing it that close. They're measuring six feet out and putting a rod right there. Uh, you know, there are different standards. IEEE 142 recommends that the ground rod be driven, I think, I mean, that they be spaced at, I think, the length of the ground rod. That would be, you know, so that 10 foot ground rod, separate them 10 feet. And there are other standards, I think, recommends double, it might be 142, the green book, recommends double the length of the ground rod. So you have double the length, you have the length of the ground rod, you have six feet. Code says six feet. I don't know of any studies on how it relates to lightning and induced voltage, and you have the shells and the spheres of influence. And I think John Brad, don't make it six feet. Just go ahead and make it eight feet, 10 feet, whatever you want to, and then you don't have to worry about it being bent over it and <coughs> twisting. Scott? I was just going to say, for whatever reason, a lot of people confuse this rule, and I, I'm not sure why, but it's actually very, very simple. The title says resistance of rod, pipe, and plate electrodes. So those are the only electrodes that apply. I've heard people saying, we've got to get this building down to 25 ohms or it won't pass code. No, I've no, heard no. that a lot. Just, it's rod, plate, or pipe. And it's also very simple to comply with. If you drive one ground rod, you can have someone come out, take all kinds of measurements, get it certified, do all kinds of stuff. If you have more than 25 ohms, oops, you got to drive another one. Well, the easiest thing to do is drive two. Always So if put you have two. to drive a ground rod, drive two, you're finished, go on down the road, and it's very simple, but a lot of people make it a lot more complicated. It's a really simple rule. I think so. you're right. Daniel? I was actually involved with the project, and that came up. It was going to cost, I don't know, a couple thousand bucks for uh, a ground resistance uh, testing meter guy to come out and do that. I said, put two ground rods. No, 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 no. we got to check the one don't first. Don't even call them. So. Yeah.